As per usual, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. So turn with me to the book of John chapter 1. Please turn with me to the book of John chapter 1. As per usual, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you're there with me, please say I. I. Two. Three. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Are we all there? All right, great. All those people online, are you guys all there? I hope so. I hope so. It goes as follows. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. Verse 4. In him was life and the life was the light of all men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And in the word and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 15. John bore witness of him and said and sorry and cried out, saying, This was he whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And, and of his fullness, we have all received the grace for grace. Verse 17. And the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is, who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Amen. I really, really, really love that scripture for many reasons. And um, even as um, the praise and worship was going on, the Holy Spirit reminded me to share something that happened during my conversion experience of knowing this man called Jesus the Christ. I remember during that time in university where I just felt something pricking me and always speaking to me and just trying to align me with truth, light, love and righteousness. And in it doing that, I I found a few things problematic because I was like, you know what? I wanted to kind of practice this Christian walk, but I started off in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And I tried to speak those eloquent words of wisdom to my housemates in university. And they're like, man, where are you getting this from? I'm like, don't worry, man. I've got the plug. I've got the source. But I can't tell you who that source is. Wisdom. And then as I began to pray, I remember I started praying. And as I started praying, I realized, even though traditionally growing up in a Christian household, my, our prayers usually end in Jesus' name. Unfortunately for myself, I would end my prayer with, in God's name. Why? Because I still wrestled to understand that, unfortunately, society at times, whether it's through images, paintings, and maybe even a whitewash of history, is maybe portrayed as this Jesus, as this white European with blue eyes, and making him depict himself as one way. And unfortunately, during my time in university, many other people say, oh, you're doing is worshipping this man, or a white man, or a false religion, or X, Y, and Z. And unfortunately, that led to me being reluctant to say in Jesus' name. I say that because on this day of us celebrating this particular day called Easter, it is important to know Jesus' name. 
Why was I reluctant? Because I didn't want to say something that could be a false God. But we see that Jesus is the true living God. Notice I use the term living because many of us and many people are serving false gods. The same way many people at times go and get their hair cut and get their hairline, but there is no line to shape up. They're just using the white chalk to pretend that there is such a hairline there. There is nothing there. It is a false God. It is a myth. It doesn't exist. But there is a true living God and his name is Jesus. The title of my sermon today is entitled Begotten But Not Forgotten. Begotten But Not Forgotten. As I was reading through James chapter, sorry, John chapter one, you could see it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. You see, if I would say for anyone that is a new believer or a non-believer and you want to explore the Christian faith, I would implore you to start with the book of John. There is so much in the book of John that you can really take forward. But for anyone that knows me, I love history, philosophy, poetry and the like. And when I began to read this, I'm like, this is very poetic. But it's true for at the same time. Verse two says, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made, what? Through him, key word, through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. And in him was life and the life was the light of all men. Chop me down to verse seven. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Jump down with me to verse 10. He was in the world and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. We live in a time and in an age, whether it's through media, music, movies and the like, they'll do all they can do to mock Jesus the Christ. They will do all they can do to belittle Jesus the Christ. And even down into the early centuries, many at times, many people believe that, oh, he was just a begotten son. Begotten. So what do we mean by begotten? Begotten is the term, in in the Greek term is monokeneus. And that means to be um, the, the one of, or one of only, or the one only of. And that's why you'll see many scriptures and many translations. It says, when we look at John 3, 16, for what God so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son. And other versions say only begotten son or one and only begotten son. And as we see this, sometimes that can kind of pose some problems within the Christian worldview or the Christian belief for non-believers or non-believers that try to discredit that Jesus being divine. What do I mean by that? When we usually use, i.e. in the King James Version, when the King James Version decided to use the begotten son, Many a times the begotten, the word begotten, either being the only son or one of, at times many people could deem that to being as, yeah, he's just one of. Or maybe it was figurative. Maybe he's just, yeah, he's just a creation or whatever. And we've seen other world religions that try to discredit the deity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by either calling him a prophet or just um, somebody that's just come to or a good person per se. But we need to understand that there is much more behind that. Turn with me and quickly look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, as we do a little bit of study to understand why they use the term begotten and how that word at times could be either problematic for those that don't fully understand the context of how it was used for Jesus the Christ. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He, sorry, he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. It's a problem here now because Isaac is now offering up his only begotten son. But many times people believe, well, Jesus is the only begotten son. But if Abraham has a begotten son and maybe God has a begotten son and we understand that Isaac wasn't equal with his father Abraham and wasn't alive when his father Abraham was, people will use that same problem for Jesus the Christ. Are you guys still following me so far? But we need to understand that when you understand the word begotten in monogeneus, we understand that whether, whether it means only or the one and only, there is also various ways to understand this, where only meaning the mono and genoa meaning to beget, the only one to beget. But here's where it gets really, really interesting. There's also another way to understand the word begotten, which I believe is ascribed and, and is aligned with our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Another way to understand this in the Hebrew of that is the word yahid, which means to be of its only kind. 
The word Yahid is also the same word that was used in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. So follow me with me as I read the scripture from Genesis 22, verse 2. Then it says, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer, and offer him there as a burnt offering to one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. It said, take your only son. But ask me, guys and girls, did Abraham only have one son? No, he didn't. But then if he didn't have only one son and it says, take your only son and you only want a begotten son. Again, sometimes these things still pose certain problems within the way people may understand or interpret scripture when it comes to John 3.16 or in the New Testament where we talk about Jesus being the begotten. But unless we understand the unique word of understanding that it is of the only kind, the Yahid, the only kind, a unique one, one of its own kind. Then we understand as God is the father, God the son is equal in terms of kind, but unique or distinctive in terms of role. When you understand that Jesus is of the same kind, that Jesus is not only righteous, but also eternal, that Jesus is also the word in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And nothing was made through him that was made. But only God can truly make, create, bring into being. And if God can only create and bring into being, therefore God is not only life, he is life. I want to implore us today and inform us today that the more I'm looking out into the world, whether it's during a pandemic, one of the things I've seen the enemy try to run rampant with, whether it's through some music and scenes and stuff that I've seen recently in the media, is try to discredit who Jesus is. Yes, he came as a lamb, but he will return as a lion. Yes, he came with grace, but understand that he's also a judge. You see this man called Jesus is really important when we understand Easter, because the moment we belittle who Jesus is to merely a, a good teacher, a good person, someone who had a moral compass and forget that he was someone who was sinless and someone who came down from heaven for us, we actually forget why we are here. We forget why we are here. And when we forget where we are here, we're also forgetting where we are aiming to go to or get to. John chapter 8, verse 58. What does Jesus tell us? He says, Jesus says to them, but assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And they picked up stones to stone him. Why would they stone somebody if he was just merely a good teacher? Because they believed that what he said was blasphemous to count himself equal with God. And if you've read the context of John chapter eight, you'll see that they're saying, how would you count yourself before Abraham when you're not even 50? They asked him. And Jesus goes on to say, and he begins to elaborate and, and show them more that you don't understand that I've come from heaven. <laughs> you'll see me in bodily form, but you don't understand that I am eternal. Turn with me again to John chapter three, verse 10. And I'll be reading as follows. John chapter three, verse 10. That I am. <laughs> Lord be with us today. John chapter three, verse 10. And Jesus answered and said to him, are you a good teacher of Israel? Do you not know these things? But, but assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, now will you believe when I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son, again, only begotten, only kind, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Play again with me. If you truly believe, trust, follow Christ, you would not perish, but have everlasting life. Therefore, I believe by default, if you do not believe, follow and put your full trust in Christ, therefore you understand that there is no eternal life for one. Would we all agree on that? Okay. If that's the case, let me play devil's advocate for a moment, pun intended. If you was the enemy to know that you could never ever get 
into heaven. How would you, what would you say to people that you know that might be on the journey of finding Jesus? But you know that you don't want them to be there. You see, sometimes, be honest with me, how many of you guys have been in this place and been jealous once upon a time in your life? Just a few, like, nah, I've never been jealous. I'm like, Jesus, that's cool. You see, when I begin to, when I look at this, I realize that sometimes even on my youthful self, sometimes jealousy creeps up on me even when I was a child, my little brother. And I remember when my mum used to make chips and um, it's a Bernard Matthews um, chicken drumstick. Anyone remember those times? And as I used to eat, some of you guys are reminiscing, I know, right? Don't lick your lips, it's all right, we're in church. Focus. And, and as we was enjoying that, my mum used to give me two with chips and my, she gave my little brother one. Yeah, I'm the senior one, you know? So how she used to give that to me, I don't know where this natural jealousy came from. I used to watch him. How you doing? Oh, bro, we need to hurry up and eat your chicken, you know? And I'll eat my one, but I'll eat slowly and I'll race him. But really, truly, I want him to finish his so I can go, nah, 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 nah. I still got mine. Sad, isn't it? I know. But it almost showed almost the sinful nature that was ingrained within my being. But there is something about Christ where he has come to save us, not only from us thinking that we are good, but saving us because he is good and he can now offer us grace. You see, there is something about this man called Jesus the Christ that has come to give us everlasting life to ultimately save us from ourselves. But one thing the enemy does within his de- jealous nature, just like me, just wanting for my brother to finish his chicken drumstick, the enemy doesn't even want you to taste what heaven looks like. He doesn't even want you to know who your Lord and Savior is. So what does he do? He causes one to lean on your own understanding. He causes a pain and a pandemic in a sense, and he uses, i.e., the current pain or a pandemic for people to believe that, see, the church is not on. You might as well go and do your own thing. See, you don't, you don't need church. You don't need a fellowship. Just do your own way. Just stay at home. Oh, you don't need community. Just open your Bible. But gradually the aim is to reduce the power that God has in front of you, whether it's through community, through his love, through fellowship and ultimately through his word to discredit who Jesus is. We see in Timothy that it tells us that in the last days that people will become lovers of self, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Oh yeah, you can read your word, but I don't want you to know that Jesus Christ is the one that is true and powerful. I shared with you that in my uni times, I was like, yeah, in God's name, amen. Not knowing I'm praying, but I'm denying its power. Not knowing I'm saying things, but I'm denying its power. You see, he was begotten, but he will never, ever be forgotten. See, the enemy wants you as a believer to become passive in your prayer walk, to become passive in your faith, to not persevere and push through sometimes the current pain you may be going through. But like I've said, learn to grow through what you go through. And the only way you could truly grow through what you are going through is when you allow the God of grace to be with you. Because the enemy wants you to do it in your own strength. Because when you do something in your own strength, just like a Duracell battery, you will soon expire. And when you run out of energy, you will see, just like we see in the word, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I don't want to do this no more. I'm praying for my loved ones that unfortunately have passed on. I don't want to do this no more. I'm reading the word and I'm looking for another job and nothing's come. I don't want to do this no more. The yeah, this GG's, I've been praying, I've been giving my tithe and offering, but it seems like nothing is adding up. You see, God's ways are not always, and the enemy will tell you, so you give tithe and offering, but you still haven't got your breakthrough. So why are you still praying to somebody that hasn't given you a breakthrough? But we must remember that God's ways are not like ours. His ways are not our ways. But in understanding why Jesus Why begotten and not forgotten is because we must understand that sin must be paid in full. Turn with me to um, Galatians, sorry, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. And it goes as follows. He who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Whose sin did he purge? Ours. But for him to purge our sin, we must first give our sin to him. But the enemy understands that you cannot be free and you cannot be guilt free if you've not given your sin to the one that wants to give you freedom. John 10.10, 10, the enemy has come to steal, kill and destroy. And we sometimes stop there. And if you know some of my wonderful family relatives, they're really passionate about that. We understand the enemy will come and steal, kill and destroy and they stop there. But they understand that the power is in the latter part. 
because you could tell me a problem, but you remind me of the promise. And the promise is that but God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Where does that abundant life come from? The word. The word and the word. What do you mean, Emmanuel? The word as in the holy word and the word as in Jesus, the Christ, who is the word, who became flesh and who did he dwell amongst us? Understand in this pandemic, in this process, in this pain and sometimes in the temporal problems you go through, the word is still with you. You might not hear him. You might not feel him. He is with you. He will not forsake you and he will not leave you. Don't matter what the enemy says. He comes to condemn. He comes to steal. He comes to, he comes to destroy. And ultimately, he comes to ruin your path that will truly lead to righteousness. And on this Easter period, I want to read with you a scripture, a pretty long scripture. But one, I thought, you know what? I really love to read this with you guys. Because when it comes to understanding why Jesus is begotten, but not forgotten, it is important for us to keep remembering the story of Jesus. And that's why it's important to evangelize. And many times people say evangelize Jesus, but how? Where do I start from? One way to evangelize is to share your story and what Jesus has done in your life. And sometimes another way is to play a particular game. And I want to play that game with you. I'm going to read something for you. And I want everyone to participate with me. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? You're not asleep. You're with me? All right, cool. Tell me to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Right from the top. He who has believed our report. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He, has no, he had no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there was no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he hid, I'm sorry, and we hid. And as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he was born our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. All like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from the prison and from the judgment. And who will declare his and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of the people of my people. He was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich as it was in his death. Because he has done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Some virgins say it pleased the Lord to crush him. But he, was, but, but he put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in the land. Verse, verse 11. And he shall see the labor of the soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Verse 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressor, transgressors. Transgressors. Oh, pardon me. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Got it right there. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Question. It's not a trick question. I always say the only silly answer you can give me is the answer you failed to give me. So over to everybody. Who would you say this person is describing? Everyone's got their face mask. Let's say Jesus about my face mask. Say it with your chest. So on, say it with your chest. Who would you say the person is describing? You sure? You sure? All right, let, 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 let's, let's do this properly. If you're sure, raise your hand. All right, if you're not sure, just do this. If you're not sure, do this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
as, as much as many a times where we look at Isaiah 53, many people still ascribe that to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The funny thing about it is that that was written 700 years before Jesus came. The same way that question was asked. But Jesus, you, how could you know Abraham if you're not even up to 50? But before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. And if there's one thing I found, I always read that that's a scripture that I read every Easter. Amongst many, it's one I read every Easter. Why? Because I truly come to understand that the reason why we should celebrate Easter, because sometimes in life we may not remember, you may, you may not remember how pe what people said to you, but sometimes you always remember how they made you feel. You see, one thing about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that we love because he first loved us. We remember that time when we first got saved and that euphoric, that moment, that moment, like, oh my days, I feel so alive. That moment where every sin, every problem, every weight, every guilt I've ever gone through, it just feels like it melted away when all the other things melt away. And we understand that we must learn that Jesus was the begotten son, but he's not the forgotten son. Just like the prodigal son that went away and lived his best life and went to do what he wanted to do, the father stayed looking to see when his son will come home. Two things I want you to remember about the word forget or forgotten is that the enemy wants you to forget who Jesus truly is. Do not allow that to happen. And as you do not allow that to happen, also do not allow condemnation to rule you that you feel God has forgotten you. Because sometimes we pray, we believe, but because we do not see the manifestation or the change happen in our own lives. Like, yeah, maybe he's forgotten me. Maybe he's forgotten me. I love what I believe, and you guys can go and um, cross-reference this for me. I remember hearing a brief story about Germany, and we speak about the Holocaust, and I truly believe that, go and cross-reference this for me, that they will not even allow their people to deny that the Holocaust took place. They won't allow it. And it reminds me of a quote that those that forget the past are likely to repeat it. Those that forget Jesus the Christ are likely to forget the power, are likely to forget his grace, are likely to go and do things in their own ways, but the blind continue to lead the blind. But Jesus has been our breakthrough. He's been the bridge that we can cross over to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because when you understand the true meaning of Easter, when you understand the true power of the word, when you understand that the word dwelt amongst us and we sometimes ourselves, we don't comprehend it. We sometimes go through things and we forget it. But Jesus says, I forgive you. I love you. We love because he truly first loved us. Begotten, but not forgotten. May we never forget his love. May we never forget his grace. May we never forget his goodness. May we never forget his righteousness. May we never forget that he was sinless but took and absorbed every single one of our past sins, present sins, and even future sins, and still says you are worthy, and throws those sins into the sea of forgetfulness and says, I love you. So we can become the adopted children of the Most High God. Let's bow our heads and pray.